Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So, AI is a really big thing right now, and in this artist community that I'm in, it's almost this taboo thing where uh, some people are really, really against it, and other people are like, oh, I don't know, there might be something there. Um, depends on where you're at. I Not really the point of this video. The point of this video is actually... I want to, as an artist, see if I can actually out-create AI. So, what I've got is, I found this little Mario, he came in a packet like this, but I've already opened him up and I'll let you take a look at him. Um, he's just this little tiny Mario and what I'd like to do is build a robotic piranha plant that he is piloting. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask a buddy of mine who does mess around with uh, AI just a little bit, just for fun, and I'm going to ask him if he will do some prompts. Now the prompts will be Mario piloting a robotic piranha plant. I want it to have robotic legs and maybe some kind of small miniature diorama to go with it. And for the sake of this challenge, I'm gonna ask him to do no background. So we will compare my build against AI and see if the old artist can beat a computer. Come on, let's do it. All right, so here's a little mini Mario, and then I've got these lids from a Frosty Jr. from Wendy's, so I think they're gonna make a nice little head. And then I've got a hairspray cap and this little polystyrene tube. I've got this little model that I found on sale someplace and I got these Final Faction legs. So I'm looking at the two different legs, one from the model, one from the Final Faction, and trying to decide which is gonna work better for my robot. And after looking at them, I think this set on the right fits Mario a little bit better and feels like that world. So I think I'm gonna use those legs. Now this model, this robot, it has these really nice pegs that the legs just pop right into. So I wanna figure out how to save those, drill a little hole through the hairspray cap, and so I can actually use that as my joint to put the leg on. So there was this little hole already on the bottom and then that center piece, so I just drew a line, got my center mark, drew a line around the legs, did a quick little measurement, and kind of figured out where that center mark should be. Got a measurement of how big the hole was and then drilled my hole through there and it fits so nice. So I'm just doing a dry fit there just to kind of see how it works and I think that's going to be perfect. So I went ahead and did some CA glue, pushed that in there. Now this is actually going to have quite a bit of pressure on it. So what I did was I just filled the entire thing with hot glue and kind of covered it. So I've got CA glue and some hot glue just to hold the pressure of pushing the legs on and off. After that hot glue dried, put those on and that looks awesome. I really like that. So now I wanna do the stem that holds the piranha plant head on. And so I had this idea of taking this polystyrene tube, kind of bending my shape. And then I was thinking if I heat this up with a heat gun, maybe that polystyrene will be flexible enough that it'll just slide right around. Um, that did not work at all. Um, so plan B, I thought, well, I'll just slide it on and bend it <laughs> and it got too hot and it just crinkled in half. So what I decided to do was I actually drew out the shape that I want, slid my flower wire in, and I just slowly and really careful and methodically bent it. Um, I did use the heat gun a little bit to warm up the polystyrene, but nothing too crazy. And then again, just barely bending really slow and carefully. And uh, it took a little bit of time, but I think in the end, it worked out pretty nice. Nothing really creased or folded on me. Once I got that bent exactly how I wanted, I went ahead and snipped off the end there. And I'm gonna make it a little bit longer so I can figure out how I want the piranha head to fit on. Now, this hairspray cap was really shiny, so I went ahead and sanded that down. And I need to make a little band to go around the green tube or the flower pot that the piranha plant comes out of. So 
I'm just rolling out some Magic Sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy. It hardens within, you know, maybe an hour or two. But it is pretty cool because if you wet it, you can actually smooth things out. So I got it fairly smooth. I'm kind of just rolling it around. And I think this is going to give me that cool lip that I need uh, for the green tube that the piranha plant comes out of. So I'll take my X-Acto knife, trim that, and I'll just kind of mash that together and get it to fit nicely. Taking some sculpting tools and smoothing everything out so they feel nice and clean. Again, wet my finger and kind of smooth all that out. And I am filling the base with hot glue because now I've got this flower wire. I'm gonna drop that in there, let that dry. I actually filled a little bit more hot glue on top of that. Now I'm filling this void with aluminum foil because I have a little bit of an idea. I want there to be dirt in there. So what I'm gonna do is I filled this, then I'll take a little bit of Magic Sculpt, kind of lay that across the top, and then sculpt that in. So I'm gonna let that dry, and while that's drying, I want this Mario to pilot, but you can see he drops down in too far, so I needed something to kind of raise him up so he was at a little bit better height, so he's looking out. So this little uh, miniature Mintos lid gives me a nice height where I feel like he can see out of the piranha plant. Now, the fun thing about this is from the very beginning, I knew exactly what I wanted. As soon as I saw this little mini Mario, um, I was like, I want him to be piloting this, but I got to build some kind of cockpit, and I've got all these scraps, and... I thought and thought, and I think sometimes I think too much. So what I had to do is just start grabbing pieces, putting them in, um, kind of exploring. And I was really struggling with this. So I thought, you know what? Forget it. I just need to do it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to start gluing some pieces in there. And, you know, if it doesn't work, I can just rip it out. But I had this Gundam foot, and it looked like a little control panel, and then this other Gundam piece that I thought would be cool as a backer. Now, it has this weird little hole in it, so I'm just going to take a piece of paper and just with my fingernail press it, and it gives me a nice little pattern. And now with this pattern, I can actually cut it out. I'll just double check that it fits, and then I'm going to take a piece of scrap polystyrene and trim out a little extra piece that I can fill that gap just so it doesn't look so weird. All right, so now all I have to do is, with my knife, score it. I don't even have to cut all the way through because with polystyrene, if you score it, you can just snap it. And then I glued this little piece in here, and it fills that gap quite nicely, sand it down, looks pretty great. Now, again, this is some... I have boxes and boxes of model bits, and I felt like it looked like some sort of metal panel that he would be standing on. So I'm gonna connect this to the back of the, it's not really a seat, it's more like a board that he can lean against as he's piloting, since he's kind of standing and gonna be controlling it. So I'm gluing these two pieces together, went ahead and glued that into the cockpit, playing with some other little pieces that looks like maybe it could hold a little joystick. I got this landing gear from a model kit, gluing that in, maybe it's like some sort of control some more little Gundam parts I'm just gluing to fill in some of this space. Now behind the seat, there was just a huge empty space, so I've got these Final Faction parts that I just snipped off the top, and now watch out for hot glue on your finger because that hurts. Um, so I glued those in. I've got this weird little sprinkler gauge <laughs> thing, but it fit really nice in the back there, and it's just filling out some of those holes. Now, the legs ended up looking too wimpy so I think I'm gonna use these um, bionicle legs but I, I don't love this ball socket and I liked the socket system that I had so I'm gonna try and salvage this piece here if I can I need to cut all that off now this is kind of scary because if this doesn't work I've kind of ruined my legs but I think these bionicle legs are gonna be a little bit more beefy um, the original robot legs were just too small overall. So just cleaning that off. And here's the moment of truth. I've snipped that off, so I've got to make this work. Um, I did some CA glue, glued that piece on. And after that dried, it actually held really nice. And I was able to 
utilize the existing socket system, so that's great. I'm gonna drill a hole in the back of the piranha plant head so I can put the stem through. Um, I need to make some leaves, so I made a little pattern. I'm cutting it out of paper first. I just drew half of it, trimmed it, and once we open this up, I've got a nice little pattern. And then we'll do like a little dry fit just to see how it's gonna work. And then I'm just transferring my pattern onto a piece of scrap polystyrene, taking my X-Acto blade and cutting this out. Now, in the past, I've used my little brother scan and cut. I've got a little plotter, but this build, I want everything to be done by hand. So I'm doing hand-drawn templates, not using the computer for that. So this has been kind of a fun challenge. All right, so for the soil, I'm taking this glue, filling the whole thing, and then I've got these really cool small little rocks, but they look almost like little clumps of dirt, so I'm gonna fill that in. You'll see what that looks like in a little bit. It looks pretty cool at the end. Here's the cockpit. Looks really weird, but once you prime it, man, it looks so cool. I love it. I'm gonna have to paint this out. Primed out the legs. And then I'm gonna paint the inside of the cockpit black. And now I'm just doing a little bit of dry brush after I painted it black with a silver metallic. This will give kind of just a little bit of uh, interest in there. Now on the control panel, which is just the Gundam foot, I'm actually painting like little screens on there, little buttons, and just kind of detailing this out just a little bit. So this is kind of fun and kind of relaxing. It's, I don't know, these kind of things are fun for me. Now the back here, I went ahead and painted those silver. Just to add some color in here, I painted the wires, one of the wires red, and that's looking really, really cool for a cockpit. Now for the, the little tube, I painted that green and I've got the legs. I painted it with a different green, so I didn't like that. So I went ahead and sprayed some spray paint into this plastic cup. At this point, I dipped my brush and I thought, oh, the paint, what is going on? And it just ate the bottom within just a matter of seconds. So you know what? I was like, I already got the paint on my desk, went ahead and cleaned it up. It ate the pattern off of my uh, cutting mat, but that's all right and I painted the uh, little pieces there on the legs. Now here is that sand that I was talking about earlier, painted that brown, and I need to paint some little dots on the piranha head. So again, I'm hand cutting all these because we're not gonna use any computer for this job. Hand cut those out, I've got some really nice little templates. What I did was I painted the lids white then I'm laying these down, and then I'm gonna paint that red. I just thought that that would be easier than trying to paint the white on top of the red. Um, sometimes red is really hard to cover. So I masked it all off, and then this is kind of your reward for all the hard work of masking as you get to unmask. For the most part, the dots worked pretty nice. There was a, a little bit of overspray, but nothing too major. I was actually able to just take um, a paintbrush and clean that up. So yeah, you can see a little bit of overspray. <coughs> Ooh, sorry, I had to get a drink of water. So I made these teeth out of some Magic Sculpt and they're a little wonky and they, they weren't quite as nice as I was hoping. So I actually found this wooden dowel and I just put it in my electric pencil sharpener and they make really nice teeth. I just got really perfect points, everything's the same putting a black wash on there. Now I love doing weathering on my builds. It just gives something really magical, but I gotta tell you, it can be really scary. Uh, you normally just put it down and then coat the entire thing and then wipe it off. But I spent like a lot of time getting all of this, you know, masked and painted and yikes to do that. But you gotta trust the process because once you pat that off and start weathering and chipping it, oh, it just really adds to it. So I'm gonna wrap up this project with a little bit of chipping. I'm gonna glue these leaves on and then I'm going to see if my buddy sent me a message with his AI render. Okay, so my build is done and my buddy sent me a picture and I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to open his text message and see what it looks like. I'm kind of nervous because 
<laughs> I don't know. I just put so much time into this, and I hope I can do better than computers. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it is. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, nothing like what I had in my mind at all. And what's interesting is my buddy I was talking to him, he called me and said, I'm going to send them to you, so don't look until you're ready. And what he told me was he had something very specific in his mind, and he could not get the computer to generate what he specifically wanted. It just kind of created its thing, and he had to go with it. So, um, hmm. Yeah, it's totally different. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a shot of this, and I'll put it up on the screen at the end here. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't ask this uh, very often, but if you like this and you think, hey, I want to support an artist and, you know, I think the human brain is still cooler than a computer, would you mind sharing this with your friends? Maybe just uh, copy and share the YouTube video or uh, do something on your Instagram. I would totally appreciate it. It'd be really cool. And if you like these, I'll do more of them. So let's take a look at this picture and then let's do some turnaround shots. Oh, and by the way, I couldn't help myself, but I made a little miniature diorama. I was taking photographs of it and I was like, ah, it needs just a little something. So I spent a few more hours and just knocked that out. I didn't record it, but just made it super quick. So let me know what you think. As always, it's a great day to be a toy nerd and I hope I'm better than a computer. Have a good one.